Hi, it's Lloyd from Blackpool Air Rifles, uh, bringing you a nice video today about the new Virac HW110ST. A uh, bit of a mouthful, but there you go. Uh, guns have arrived on, uh, well, a couple of days ago. We've got two twos and one seven sevens in, and we've had them, like I said, we've had them a couple of days now, so we've sort of been messing about with them and uh, trialing them out, seeing what they're like. And uh, the nice thing is we can report quite a few things about the 110. And what I'm going to do today as well, we're also going to compare them with the 100 and ask that all important question. Uh, who wants the HW110? Why is it going to be a, a better gun for certain people? And is it better value for money than the 100? And is it also better value and is it a better gun than the new R10 SE as well? That'll be, uh, that'll be quite interesting. Okay, so we've got the new 110s in stock. As you can see, uh, there are some similar things about it to the 100 and there are some things that are obviously very, very different. Uh, in fact, what I'm going to do to start off with, we've actually got a standard HW100S in and we're going to actually show you the physical differences because I think it's much better to see them than talk about it. So as you can see, the overall length of the rifle is what, about three inches shorter? Um, and yet, uh, people, in fact, actually, um, somebody actually mentioned they thought this was a carbine. It isn't. This is basically the standard gun because what you've got is you've got the standard cylinder, you've got the standard uh, barrel, but you might, if you notice the actual block at the back, you can see that the block on the new 110 is considerably shorter, leading to its overall length being uh, reduced a little bit, which is nice. So already you can see you've got a bit of advantage with the, uh, with the 110. You've got a shorter, more compact gun. So if you're going to be shooting in close... Uh, close confined areas that is going to be the better bet just just that little thing on its own uh, anyway uh, what have we got with the 110 in comparison and, and uh, why is it a, a hundred pounds different okay well what you've got is is they've gone through or Virac have gone through what they call the refining process um, which basically means um, that the the block um, has been shortened um, and all the stuff inside the block the hammer the regulator has all been refined it's been improved it's been reduced in size um, what what difference does that make? Well, basically, um, Chris at Hull Cartridge, thank you very much, Chris, for filling me in on these details, says that the hammer is uh, is now a shorter stroke, which theoretically means that you might get a better lock time, which again, theoretically means you might actually get better accuracy out of the 110. Also as well, although they're quoting the same figures, which is um, 110 in 177 and 130 in 22, when I spoke to Chris this morning, he said, that there has been an improvement in efficiency. So although they're quoting the same figures as the as the original 100, you possibly will get more. In fact, Chris did mention, uh, and obviously we can't guarantee this, we're only going to guarantee the official figures, but Chris did mention that he actually managed to get 150 shots out of the 2-2, which to be honest with you, is, is, is damn impressive. Um, so that's that's the benefit of reducing um, reducing the components and refining them. You'll also notice as well that the... the um, that the breech block on the back is now what's called ballistic polymer. Um, plastic, black plastic. Uh, good plastic, nevertheless. Strong plastic that's going to be very, very resistant to knocks and bangs and hopefully uh, wear and tear over a long period of time. I mean, some plastics are extremely good these days, but basically we've got a ballistic polymer breech. Now, uh, advantages. Well, yeah, it... it it reduces your weight. Um, it also reduces the, the, the cost of manufacture. Uh, I'll get to that a little bit more in a bit. What it also does as well is that I have been told that certain people have had issues. I'll just put that down a sec. Certain people have had issues with the 100 because this is not connected to that very well. Okay, um, There is no bridge over the top. So evidently when certain people are putting certain scopes on, like say the connects, they're saying that they are actually, because of this problem, they're getting... Um, they're getting movement. They're basically getting a touch of movement and they're getting a slight zero shift in. Now, to be honest with you, I've never, I've never had that complaint. I've never heard about anybody complaining about zero shift on a HW100, but it must happen um, because Farak have told me so. Um, if you look at this breech block, it is one piece. Uh, one piece, obviously, we're not going to have that problem. What I didn't, what obviously is, is, is pretty obvious as well, is they've gone to Picatinny Rail. Some people know it as Weaver, Picatinny Rail. Uh, why, I, I, 
doesn't make any sense to me why they've done it, to be honest with you. But basically, bear that in mind, because if you get a 110 and you want to get it home and you want to put a scope on, obviously the Picatinny rail will mean that you need new mounts. So you're going to have to buy or you're going to have to have a set of the wider Picatinny mounts uh, to actually fit this. So, you know, um, I, I, I can't see the point in it, but maybe some people can. You know, leave a comment if you sort of have any idea why Picatinny should theoretically be better on an air rifle because I have no idea. Uh, anyway, uh, so we've basically got we've got the rubberized stock. Um, we've got uh, we've got the same length cylinder, the same length barrel, uh, but like I said, because because the overall length has, has dropped and this part here has dropped, we've got like a, a a weight movement to the back, so the balance is slightly different. Um, and overall, um, the weight has come down. Now, uh, to actually show you this, we've got this um, uh, very advanced um, weighing machine. So we're going to actually weigh them now and see what the difference is. So we've got HW100. That weighs in, out of the box, at 3,340 grams. Uh, which is uh, let's have a look. Which is in old money is seven pounds eight and a half eight and a half ounces. Okay, uh, the new gun uh, weighs seven pounds and three three and a half ounces. So there's 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 what five ounces difference. Uh, and if you want it in new money, that's. Uh, that's 3,000, uh, 3,300 grams. So there is a weight saving, which is which is nice. A uh, couple of other things about it. I haven't shown you these yet, but the magazines are different as well. Uh, the old one, 14 shot. The new one uh, is 10 shot. Now, they've obviously had to, you can see there's a difference in size. They've, they've reduced the size because they wanted to get the magazine uh, into the mechanism in fact, I'll, I'll show you how to do this as well. So they wanted to get the magazine into the mechanism and have this one-piece rail over the top. And obviously, having a 14-shot mag, it just wouldn't have fitted. So we've gone down to a 10-shot mag. Uh, fitting it is very, very simple. But you do have to be... You, you've got a little lever there, as you can see. That's the new lever that, that replaces the old little black lever, which, um, you know, it does the same job. So you basically push that up. Uh, and you can see the little stud in the middle does, uh, goes backwards. And then basically, you push that in. Okay, and click that lever down, and there you go, that's ready to go. And if I fire it, you can hear that the gun is every bit as quiet as um, as the previous one. Uh, obviously because you get the Virex answer with it, which, uh, which are absolutely superb. Um, right, well, I think, oh, uh, there's a couple of other little points actually. Chris mentioned as well this morning, for all you lefties out there, that that sooner or later, and it, and it hopefully should be sooner, this gun is going to be offered um, with a left-handed bolt. Um, obviously, it'll be on the other side, a left-handed bolt, and also as well, you will be able to put the magazine in from the left-hand side. So lefties out there, uh, you've not been forgotten. I think that's great. So you're going to have a, a true left-handed gun. Uh, obviously, the stock won't change because the stock is ambidextrous anyway, so there's no need to mess about with the stock or change it in any anywhere. Uh, trigger unit, <clears throat> uh, not the same as the HW100. Seems to perform exactly the same, but evidently the trigger unit is slightly different internally. Uh, but, like I said, performance exactly the same. The regulator is ever so slightly different because it's a little bit more efficient and it's a little bit smaller. And really, that's that's about that's about all the significant changes that I can think of. Um, whether you, I mean, I you know, I, I I can understand there are certain people who might like to buy a one ten, apart from just you know Virac aficionados who just love buying everything Virac and there are plenty of people out there that just love Virac everything that they do but you know what if you if you want to if you want to save a little bit of weight you like the sort of synthetic style rubberized stock uh, and you want to uh, well more importantly you want to save a hundred pounds because the difference in price basically is uh, these are about 645 um, and 749 for the standard HW100. So basically, yeah, you've got a hundred pounds difference, which is great, and hundred pound will get you a really nice uh, scope of mounts. So that's great. So there, there's the advantages. Uh, disadvantages, I would say that, I, I mean, I, 
I don't like plastic as much as metal, to be honest with you, but that's maybe just me. Um, maybe it will be as hard wearing, but I just, just think that guns, I just prefer them in metal. Also as well, I'm not really keen on the silver bits. Uh, they'd be nice if they were black. Maybe you can see them better in the dark, I don't know, you know, I mean, you do need to, you do need to be able to operate them. By the way, that's a safety catch. You can see the safety catch has moved from the back to the forward, and it's on both sides. Um, so, and it works exactly the same as the old safety catch, so nothing, nothing really has changed there. I'd like to have seen those in black, Pff, doesn't really matter. What I also really, really don't like um, is this gigantic lettering. You know, just in case you bought one of these and you've forgotten what your name, you know, the name of the gun is, you've got the HW110 Virac. Uh, if it was me, I'd be um, doing something about that. I'd, try, I'd either remove it, Cerakot it, cover it in paint, God knows what, but I, I, I don't like that. And I'm sure that 99% of the people who are watching this video, again, couldn't actually give a monkey's about that at all. It's the performance that counts. But you know what? Aesthetics are important to a certain degree. I'd like to see that go. I'd like to see that removed completely. Um, any other thoughts about it? I think that's it. that's sort of it, really, to be honest with you. So, who do I recommend this for? People who want to save £100, people who want something a little bit lighter, something a little bit shorter. Maybe they do a lot of rat shooting or they shoot from a vehicle or something like that. Um, that, that, little, that little reduction in, in, in size and weight uh, would be nice. Um, that's about it, really. Uh, what I would say is, obviously, we've got the new... Now, you, you might have seen the R10 SE video recently, um, we, and I really like the uh, the new BSA R10 SE. I think they've done a, a great job with it. They haven't messed about with it too much, but just improved it in nice little subtle areas that will, you know, make, make the gun more desirable. Um, but there is, you know, you, you're basically, you're, you're looking at two new guns there, and, uh, and the SE... This is, by the way, this is the super carbine. This has actually just arrived in the last couple of days. So basically, everything everything good that I said about the R10 SE also applies to the super carbine. You'll probably get a few less shots, but it, it, it's it's a lovely, lovely rifle. Um, and 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 to be honest with you, um, there is a difference in price. Of course, that's seven fifty. 645 so again a hundred pound difference so really i should be comparing this directly to the hw 100 but because it's brand new we're going to compare it with the 110 and as you can see it's a little bit shorter than 110 um it is i think it's actually a little bit heavier but there's not much in it uh that one is oh it's actually it's 3000 grams and if i change the units to old money i can tell you what that is so no, nope, we'll do that again because it's too complicated for me to understand. There we go. Uh, in pounds, that's 107 pounds. That's not quite right, is it? That's 107 ounces. This is going to be in the outtakes reel. I can see it come in this. Uh, Lloyd, you can't operate a weighing scale. There we go. I think we've got it in pounds. Maybe I'm just going to throw it away. Yay! Right, okay, that is only six pounds and 14 ounces in comparison with seven pounds, six ounces. So there's actually quite a bit of difference in the weight between those two. Which would I buy? I'd buy the R10, to be totally honest with you. If I had the 100 pound extra, I'd have the R10 SE. Um, which would I have between the R10 SE and the HW100? I'd probably flip a coin, to be honest with you. Uh, we sell a lot of HW100s. They're very, very popular. People love Virax. They're a trustworthy brand. Which would I have between them? I don't know, actually. If somebody gave me one, I'd, I'd be happy with either. If I was spending my own money, I'd probably still go with a 100. Um, but that's just me, not you. So, anyway, that's it, really. So, we've got the 110, the new 110. We've got the R10 SE carbine. Um... If you've got any comments about the video, like, Lloyd, you're an idiot or whatever, you're talking rubbish and this and that and the other is, is, is different, then fair enough, just put it in the comments below. But I think that Virac have done a good job with this. Um, I don't think it's going to set the world on fire. Um, looks are obviously uh, up to you. Whether you like it or not, I don't know. But personally, if you can afford it, the £100 extra, get the £100. It's, uh, it, it, it's tried and tested and it's a fantastic gun. Uh, okay, thanks very much for listening once again. Uh, I'm sure I'll get the piss taken out of me for the uh, the Wayne Scales business, but that's what I'm here for. Thanks very much. Bye. Right, we probably need to do a bit of cutting on that actually, because that.
that was nonsense. Yeah, I should have I should have read the instructions for that first, shouldn't I? It was fine. <coughs> no, no, it, it's because it doesn't because it like it goes through. It says I can't read it because I need glasses. It says fluid ounces. Mi. Or milli, well, it can't be milliliters because it can't measure volume. Grams, get that. Pounds and ounces. Yeah, it's that because it, it went to fluid ounces and then MI. Fluid ounces is volume. Yeah, how can it measure fluid ounces? It says fluid ounces. Fuck, Fuck it. Let's, let's, go, let's go and get some dinner instead, eh? Well, it's an ounce, isn't it? It's an ounce of fluid. But an ounce of fluid weighs an ounce, doesn't it? I'll tell you what, I'll stick to guns. Right. Yeah, I won't.